Thank you so much, Pastor Craig. That's such a good word. And we just, I want to echo what he said. We're so glad that you're here and you're watching. I say here because I'm so used to saying that, but I'm so glad that you tuned in tonight and that you consider yourself a part of Lakewood. Even if this is your first time, welcome. And uh, we just are so glad that you tuned in and we love you. We're praying for you. We believe God's best for your life. Well, tonight I'm continuing a series that I began two weeks ago, and it's called Freedom and Transformation. And so we're talking about receiving healing in your soul, in the soulish area, you know, in the area of your life where you may feel broken or hurt, shame or guilt. You know, the Bible teaches us that we are three-part beings. We are spirit being, we live in this body, this earth suit, and we have a soul. And our soul is made up of our free will, our mind and our emotions. And this is what this series is all about. And for you to know that it is God's will for you to be free from negative emotions and hurts that are just holding you back and making you feel inferior. His will is that you live a strong, confident, abundant life. And so that's what we're talking about. You know, you may be listening right now and you say, well, Lisa, I, I feel like there's something missing in my life, something lacking in my life because I've been through trauma and hurt. You Maybe you are full of anger. Maybe you've turned in, uh, to an addiction to help you cope with your past. Possibly you're finding it hard to recover uh, from a broken relationship or a betrayal. And, and, and I just want you to know that you don't have to live that way. You don't have to live in that place. You don't have to stay in that place because there is complete healing and freedom in Christ Jesus. You know, in the last teaching, which was the first teaching of this series, we established four things. I'm just going to quickly mention them to you because it was our foundation. I encourage you to go back and listen to it because I can only mention the main points. But we established that Jesus wants you to be whole in your soul, that you don't have to live with the hurts of the past. We also established that Jesus paid the price for you to be healed and restored on the cross. See, Isaiah says that Jesus not only took our sins and sicknesses, but he bore our griefs, our sorrows, and our pains, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. So Jesus paid the price for you to have peace of mind, peace in your spirit, and peace in your soul. And it's so important for you to understand that so that you'll not allow Satan or your past to keep you in bondage or to continue to torment you. We also talked about how you must come out of isolation and seek help and freedom because we're only as sick as the secrets we keep. And we have to seek help from a pastor, a godly friend, or counselors, whatever it takes. Listen to this CD over and over. God is going to bring healing into your life. And then we established, lastly, that you must change the narrative in your mind, the conversation that you have with yourself on a daily basis. Conversations like this, something must be wrong with me. I'm damaged. I'm unacceptable. I'll never be healed or free from the hurt. See, that's a very brief summary of what we talked about. And those are damaging thoughts that you can get free from. And tonight, I want to talk to you about removing the negative labels from your own life. You see, many times people try to label us in a hurtful way. And sometimes we place negative labels on ourselves because of our low self-esteem or because of the hurts that we've endured. I've, I've done that myself. And as I teach tonight, I'm praying, listen to this, I'm praying that God will reveal to you any negative words or labels that you have taken on your life, that you have believed about yourself so that you can let them go and believe the truth about you. You see, God's word is the truth about you. God created you perfectly. He formed you in your mother's wombs, womb. And Psalm 139 tells us who we really are. I'd like to read that scripture to you, Psalm 139, starting with verse 13. And this is what it says. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. 
Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. God spoke the truth over you since you were in your mother's womb. He said that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. You are God's work of art. God has a plan and a purpose for you from the beginning. All the days ordained for you were written in God's book, and not one event of your past can keep you from your purpose if you will allow God to bring freedom into your life. Now, now listen to this amazing statement uh, David said. It says, God's thoughts about you are precious. God is not thinking bad, negative thoughts about you. God is not mad at you. He's not angry with you. He is not speaking negative words over you. When God looks at you, he thinks, that's my amazing creation, my masterpiece. You say, well, I'm all bound, I'm all tormented, I'm, I'm in an addiction, I'm hurt. But listen, God has compassion upon you, and he still sees the potential in you. And he looks at you, and he is believing that you will turn your face toward him and that you will begin to believe who you really are in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2.10 says it this way, For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus to do good works, to do good things that he planned for us long ago. See, this is who you really are. But here is where the battle lies. Satan is the enemy of your soul, and he comes into your life to steal, kill, and destroy. He can use people. He can use circumstances. He can use hurt and trauma. Let me tell you something about Satan. He is an identity thief. Think about that. And you must not allow him to steal your true God-given identity. Don't just release your identity to him. Jeremiah, he was a young man when God spoke to him about his purpose. And God said to him, he said, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Now, before I continue Jeremiah's story, I want you to see again that before God formed you in your mother's womb, you were set apart for God's plans and purposes. Can we just stop and let that sink into our hearts and our spirits? Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God had a plan and purpose for you. And see, sometimes that's hard for, the, for our natural mind, our earthly mind to comprehend because we don't feel qualified. We don't see how that could happen. And it was very hard for Jeremiah to understand also. God had big plans for him, but he struggled to believe it. And he began to argue with God. Have you ever argued with God? He said, God, I'm too young and I don't know how to speak. Can I tell you something? We need to quit arguing with God about who we are and what he has declared over us. It's time we believe God over anyone else. See, God said to Jeremiah, listen, strong words. He said to Jeremiah, don't say that, Jeremiah. Don't say I'm only a child. Don't so say those things about yourself. You must go everywhere I send you and say everything I command you. You see, God was serious. Jeremiah was about to miss his destiny because of the labels he put on his own life. I'm too young. I'm not a good communicator. Who told Jeremiah that? He told himself. He labeled himself as insecure and a poor communicator. Let me ask you a question. What labels are you wearing today? Could it be failure, not attractive, not a good mother, not a good father, not qualified, not worthy of love, damaged for life. God is saying to you, like a father always does take care of his children, he's saying, stop saying those things. Just stop it. Has your mother just said to you, that to you before, your dad? Just stop it. God is saying, stop it. Don't say those things 
about yourself. If you want to be a whole in your soul, you've got to take these labels off and see what God wants to do with you. Believe what God says about you over what anyone else says about you. Listen, God has already labeled you for good and not evil, to give you a hope and a future, a bright future. Don't exchange his labels because of how you feel. Satan is trying to intimidate you and keep you from your purpose. You know, there are also times we need to understand this. When people will try to intimidate you, you cannot believe everything and anything people declare over you or speak over you because people will try to label you and put you down. They will tell you what you cannot do and what you cannot be. And we must reject these labels. I think about uh, a friend of mine who told me not long ago how when her mother got mad at her one time as a teenager, she looked at her and she said, I hate the day you were ever born. And so my friend told me that, you know, she got saved and she went on with her life and got strong. She had an okay relationship with her mother, and, uh, but it was, it was strained and she had to have boundaries there. And so she was just thriving in her life, in her family, in her ministry. But one time she was at a prayer meeting and she said she just saw something in the spirit. She saw these words, uh, uh, I hate the day you were born. And she realized that she had been carrying these words all her life. And she began to cry and cry. And she asked her, her prayer partners, her friends to pray with her. And she said, I need to release these words. They're not who God says I am. And that day she released those words and she began to believe what God said about her. She never let those words dictate her life or drive her anymore. And in fact, after she released them, she was able to begin to pray for her mother and talk to her mother about her life and her past. And she found out there had been many wrongs done to her mother. And so her mother was just acting out of the hurts that she had endured herself. Listen, God doesn't want you to live with labels like that. When David heard the threats about Goliath, he was making toward the Israelites. Something in him rose up with this passion to fight Goliath. But his brothers immediately just shot him down and they said, who are you to think you could fight Goliath? You're so little, he's so big. And listen, then they said, you're just conceited. You're arrogant. You're wicked in your motives. I mean, that had to hurt David. But what his brothers didn't know is that David was also anointed by God. He wasn't going to depend on his strength to defeat Goliath. So David ignored their words, and, and the rest is history. With a, with a sling and one stone, David defeated the giant. Hey, you don't have to be highly qualified when God is on your side. So ignore the naysayers, reject their labels, and slay the giants in your life no matter what people say to you. Pursue your dreams. Believe that God is fighting for you and that he will equip you because he will. Even Jesus, I thought about him and how he had to reject negative labels. I mean, one, one, at one time or uh, at one minute, people were hailing him as the king of kings, the healer, the deliverer. And then the next minute, they were calling him, calling him a wine-bibber, full of demons and a blasphemer. You see, people don't have the right to label you. They didn't make you. They didn't create you. God is the one who created you and labeled you before anyone else could place a label on you. And I want you to see that if you accept the negative labels that people put on you, you will limit yourself. You won't have that full freedom. People don't have the power to limit you unless you allow them to. But when you turn a deaf ear to them, no one can keep you from your blessings or your purpose. I know it's not always easy. Words hurt. I know that words hurt, and they go deep within our heart sometimes. But with God's help, we can forgive, and we can release them and refuse to accept them 
in our lives. Now let me give you some steps and thoughts on how to remove the negative labels. And first of all, I want to encourage you to do something very practical. I want you to identify the labels that you have believed about yourself. You need to think about this over the next few weeks and just listen to what you're saying about yourself. And I think you should write down the negative labels that you have believed about yourself. Write down the negative words that have been spoken over yourself. And then write down, that you have spoken over yourself is what I meant to say. And then write down the negative words that others have spoken over you. Because we're going to deal with these labels once and for all. We have to get aggressive about this and just rip off these crippling labels. I'm going to give you a, a, an example on the monitor. You should be able to see it now. But on one column, I encourage you to, to write down all the negative labels. And then I want you to strike through each negative label. And when you do that, you are saying, I reject this label. It is a lie. I will not repeat this over my life anymore. I will not believe this over my life. In fact, if you want to, just get a big old Sharpie and write on there, this is a lie. These are lies. And then, then on the other column, I want you to write the truth about you, what God says about you. And, and this is what you must begin to believe over yourself and begin to speak over your life on a daily basis. Because as you do it, it may seem like nothing's happening, but it will eventually go from your mind into your spirit, and it will transform the way you think. Listen to this. It will transform the way you behave. You won't be acting out of a hurt anymore. You won't be acting out of anger anymore, because that's not who you are. You're going to see a change in your life of a very real transformation after you begin to do this. You know, that's why Romans 12, verse 2 says this, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what you're doing. You're renewing your mind. And when you begin to do that, you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, as, as you begin to walk in this freedom and transformation, that you begin to get revelation and you begin to understand things and you begin to see what God's will is for your life. Now, here's something else. We're talking about identifying the labels that you believed. Over the next few weeks, I encourage you to pray about and ask God to show you lies that you have believed yourself. Sometimes they are evident and sometimes they're not. I mean, even as I'm talking, I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, I got to quit saying that about myself. I recognize that. But then there are times when we need God to reveal them to us like he did with my friend. I remember many years ago, uh, a woman was praying for me and she began to prophesy something negative about my future. And it really bothered me and she knew it, but and, and, but I just sort of let it go. I thought I had let it go because I know that Bible prophecy is to edify, comfort, and encourage people. And I know that some people mean well, but they miss it. They make mistakes. And so I will just say this. Don't allow a thus saith the Lord to discourage you or guide your life if it doesn't line up with the Word of God. And what she said to me did not line up with the Word of God. And so after that happened, you know, I just thought that is not true. I'm not receiving that. Uh, but over the next several years, at times, not all the time, but at times I would have these thoughts of impending doom, like something bad is going to happen to me. And I didn't know why until one day God reminded me of this incident and he showed me that I had still been carrying those words around with me. I didn't even realize it, but I would think about it from time to time. And that day, I had to let go of those words for good. And that's exactly what I did. You see, God was saying to me, Lisa, that's not who you are. Don't think about that anymore. Release those words. Something good is going to happen to you. Believe that about your life. Amen. That brought such freedom into my life. I never had those impending thoughts of doom anymore. And that brings us to the second point, 
that I want to share with you, and that is this. You must reject and remove the negative labels yourself. Because listen, no one else can do this for you. And as I said, you have to be aggressive and, and proactive about this. The, the kingdom of God, the Bible says, is advancing. And the violent have to take it by force. Sometimes you have to be aggressive and violent with putting off these things that don't belong to your life. Uh, throwing off these labels that the enemy has tried to use to torment you in your life. And so you have to do something to change your situation and the course of your life. And that's exactly what a man named Jabez did in the Bible. His story is found in uh, First Chronicles 4, 9, and 10. And uh, it's a very short but powerful story. And the scripture starts out by uh, just saying or making this statement. Jabez was more honorable than all of his brothers. Now, I want to stop and say, what made him more honorable than his brothers? Why did the writer say this about him? Well, we're going to find out, and I want you to really catch it. The story goes on to say that his mother gave him the name Jabez because it means to make sorrowful, to cause distress, and to be in pain. Wow. And you thought your mama was bad. <laughs> Jabez's mother named him this because of the pain, distress, and sorrow he caused her in childbirth. She was a bitter woman, and she didn't ever want him to forget the pain he caused her. What she did is she projected her hurt and her bitterness onto her own son. And maybe that's happened to you. You've been the brunt of someone else's pain and misery. For Jabez, every time his mother called him that, she was saying to him, you make me sorrowful. I will never forget how much pain you've caused me. She was holding it against him. But Jabez rejected that ne negative label. He turned to God and he prayed this life-changing prayer. It's in verse 10. And listen to what Jabez says. He said, let me find it here. Oh God, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that, so that I will be free from pain. And the Bible says that God granted his request. So instead of living below his God-given potential, Jabez determined to relabel himself and his whole life. He rejected the label that his mother put on him, and he chose to live a life free from pain and hardship. And this is why he was considered an honorable man, because he chose God's way. He chose to believe God over his mother. He chose to make this great U-turn and say, I'm not going the way of the world. I'm not going the way that my mother wants me to go. I am going to make a U-turn in my life. I'm going to change my destiny, and I'm going to go with God. I'm going to go with what God said about me. And I, I like the fact that he asked big. I mean, Jabez made four requests of God that changed the course of his life and destiny forever. He shows us how to walk this out, this pathway of freedom. And I want to talk about what he prayed. First of all, Jabez prayed this. He said, God, bless me. Two powerful words. Can you pray that today in your life? Are you afraid to pray that? Do you feel unworthy to pray that? How do you think Jabez felt? He was already labeled, but he, he just decided to be bold and courageous. And Jabez said, God, bless me. I don't want to live a life of pain. Jabez was saying in essence, God, I want to be different than my brothers. I want to be different than my mother. I reject that label. I choose to live the blessed life that you have for me. And I want to encourage you like Jabez, you can simply ask God to bless you. God so blessed Jabez that today we are still talking about him. Books have been written about him. God made his name great, and it was through Jabez's lineage that Jesus was born. He went from a projected life of pain to being part of the ancestry of Jesus. See, this is what happens 
when you reject negative labels and choose God's path. That reminds me of what God said to Abraham. And the Bible says that we are heirs of Abraham. In other words, that means what God promised Abraham in the Bible, he promised you in the Bible. And one of the things that God said to Abraham in Genesis 12, he said, if you will obey me, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I, whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Listen, that's the life that God wants for you. Just ask him. That's all Jabez did. God, bless me. Begin to pray, God, bless me and make my name great. Let me be known for serving you. Let me be known for doing your will. Let me leave a godly legacy. Some of you feel right now that you have never been blessed in your life. You have never had a mother or father bless you or approve of you. You just can't even imagine living the blessed life. But I'm telling you, I'm breaking that thing over you right now in the name of Jesus. You are going to believe that God wants you blessed. You are going to see that God is going to free you and transform you to begin to think like God thinks. And God is going to bless you greatly and he is going to make your name great and I just encourage you to, uh, to rise up in your spirit take that that is a word from God it's it's too it's it's it, uh, it's it's time is what I'm trying to say to get up and do what God has called you to do. You sat around too long. You believed a lie too long. You held on to the labels too long. And God is saying, rise up and be who I called you to be in the name of Jesus. Rise up today. God wants to bless you greatly. Amen. The second thing that Jake's, uh, Jabez prayed was this. He said, God, enlarge me. You see, his mother tried to put him down and diminish him. The Lord spoke this to me one time, and I love to repeat it. He said, people will try to minimize and criticize you, but God is about to maximize and supersize you. Hey, don't bow down to the negative labels of people. Reject them. Jabez realized that God had more than a life of pain for him. He not only wanted to be blessed, he wanted to be a blessing, to make a difference in life and to do great things. And so let's pray like Jabez, God, enlarge me. God, increase me. Transform me. Use me. Listen to this. Enlarge my influence. Let me be a blessing to other people. Believe that God wants to do more for you, in you, and with you. The third thing that Jabez prayed is this, God, let your hand be with me. I love that because Jabez didn't want to go anywhere without God's presence, without his favor and blessing. He began to listen to God. He began to follow God and not the path of his mother and brothers. And God called him an honorable man because of this decision. Listen, you can do the same today. You can take hold of God's hand and he will direct your steps. He will lead you by your Holy Spirit. He will take you places you never dreamed you would go. And when that is when you, when you allow him to take those limiting labels off. That labels limit you. Sometimes labels torment you. Listen, and it's time to break those labels over your life. The last thing that Jabez prayed was this. He said, God, keep me from a life of trouble and pain. Now, see, his mother had labeled him as, as having a life of pain. Jabez, you cause pain in my life, make you have pain. But Jabez determined, God, I don't want to live a life of pain. I want to live a life of abundance and joy for you. And he just spoke it out to God. He prayed it. For you, it may be this. I don't want to be controlled by what people have spoken over me. I want to get free from anger. I want to get free from low self-esteem and be confident in who God made me. 
I'm ready to rip off the negative labels and walk in the freedom that Jesus has for me. All Jabez did was ask. Let me ask you a question. What would happen if you removed all the negative labels and the lies that you've been carrying? Like I removed that label, like Jeremiah, like my friend, how different could your life be? You can change the course of your life and your destiny tonight by reaching out to God who wants to bless you and use you, by letting go of the hurts and words that have held you captive. That's exactly what labels do. Negative labels hold you captive. And let me tell you something. Jesus came to set the captives free. He wants you free. He wants you transformed in your life. You can get free by believing the labels that God has already placed on on you. God's word says that you are chosen. You're the apple of his eyes. You are favored. You're successful. You are approved. You're accepted. I could go on and on. Psalm 31, 19 says this, how great is his goodness that he has stored up for you. You see, that's the future that God has for you. That's how God has labeled you. Let me tell you about a friend of ours. His name is Damon, and he grew up believing that he was limited and labeled as a troublemaker. As a 12-year-old, things began to spin out of control when his father left his mother, and it just really devastated him. And knowing uh, that his father always kept kept a loaded gun in his bedroom, Damon decided one day to take his life. But when he pulled the trigger, It didn't go off because that day it was not loaded, which was unusual. His mother knew what a miracle that that was. And with tears streaming down her face, she said, Damon, she said, God has a plan for your life. Don't ever forget this. But for a while, Damon did forget who he was. He became more angry and rebellious and even joined racial hate groups. He struggled with everything and everyone. He had a problem with everyone. And he was labeled a troublemaker by his high school principal. In fact, his high school principal told him that he would be in prison by the time he was 18. Two people spoke that over his life. And at a party one night, a fight broke out and bullets began to fly. And Damon fired shots and he hit two people and... People were screaming as they were calling the police, and Damon fled by jumping into the truck trunk of a friend's car, and the friend sped away and dropped him off in the woods. And lying there alone in the dark woods, Damon thought of all the labels people had put on him. You're a troublemaker. You're going to be a criminal. You're a high school dropout. You're a hater. It seemed like his life was just passing before him in slow motion. And as he remembered all these things, he remembered also what his mother told about him. She said, Damon, don't ever forget, God has a plan for your life. You see, his mother labeled him for good and for God when others labeled him as a failure. And when Damon remembered those words, he looked up to heaven and he said, God, if you can get me out of this hell that I'm living in, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And after praying that prayer in the woods, he said, just fear and desperation melted from his heart and this overwhelming peace replaced the anger and the hurt. And Damon made his way home and he was never questioned about the incident And I I believe with all my heart that that because he had a praying mother, that Damon had a hedge of protection around him. Damon had a hedge of protection around him because he had a praying mother. Damon has been serving God ever since. He decided to relabel himself. He went back to school to complete his education so we could say he's a learner today. He began to attend a great church and a Bible school so we could say he's a godly man and a Bible student. He dedicated himself to helping trouble youth and inmates so he's a lover of people and a crime preventer. Let me ask you, what if Damon would have not taken off the negative labels? He would have probably been in prison today. There are people who would not know the Lord because, God, because Damon led them to the Lord. 
Listen, if you are one of those praying mothers or fathers, I want to encourage you right now, don't give up on your child. Keep labeling them with the Word of God, and they will never forget it. They will turn to the Lord. We believe they're all coming back into the kingdom of God just like Damon did. Listen, like Jabez, like Jeremiah, let's remove those negative labels tonight. Let's change the course of our destiny forever. I want to lead you in a prayer right now to do that. I know that many of you are watching or listening, and this resonates with you. And you're just thinking of the labels that people have put on you, and you're thinking of the wrong things that you've been saying about yourself. And, you know, in this moment where God is speaking, let's, let's take an action of faith. Let's do something about it. If you want to let go of these labels and walk into the freedom that God has given you, I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Father, I recognize that I've held on to negative words and labels. And today I reject them. I reject them all. That is not who I am. I will not allow anyone or anything to control my future. I will relabel myself with your word. And I declare that I'm whole, I'm free, and I am complete in you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I just believe with all my heart that something right now turned in your life and shifted in your life because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is even present with you right now. And some of you, you may be like my friend. You're just weeping because of the things that you realize that you believed over your life. But you know what? That's just the healing power of God. God is showing you that he's washing away those hurts. He's washing away those negative words. He's healing you in your soul and in your emotions. He's making you strong again. He's making you into the man or woman that he created you to believe. So cooperate with him and begin to meditate on his word. Amen. I hope that bless you tonight. And I want to give every person an opportunity to have a personal relationship with God today. So if you would bow your heads with me and let me just speak to your heart. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior, you can do that right now. And I invite you to pray this prayer after me. Say, God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I am in need of a Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins, everything that I've done. And Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. Amen and amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible says that you got born again on the inside. That's in your spirit, in the real you. You have become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And now the Holy Spirit dwells within you, and he will lead you, and he will guide you. Not only that, Jesus forgave all of your sins, and he cleansed you with his righteousness he doesn't see your past. He doesn't see you as a sinner. He sees you as his child. And you are, and he is your heavenly father. And he will help you navigate your life better than you could ever do it on your own. God has given you a new start on your life. I like to say it this way, a new start with a new heart. Amen, amen. So I encourage you to get into a well, if you can't get into a good Bible-believing church or either watch online during this time, we invite you to come back anytime we have services Sunday morning, twice, and then we have Wednesday night services. And uh, we just invite you to be a part of any of those services. But I want to close. Before we close, let me close with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you next time.